Turkey is so pretty. I absolutely love it. How pretty a bow is this? This is a classic spoon bow. Really pretty. Uh, it's quite handsome. I'd even shoot across the Nova Scotia on this boat. She is just so sweet. Look at that. This is a very solid little boat. Oh my gosh, great. This is happy. I like this boat. Hi there, this is Captain Ku and my old sailing buddy Randy. Join us as we travel hither and yon as we look for some great deals on classic boats and learn a little with each one. Hey, Captain. Randy? Yeah. Don't bother me. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm in a world here of potential want and need. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I need a boat and I found one I want. Ah. <laughs> you know how we've spoken about number of boats that people might want to buy if they could just go out and win that lottery? This boat, all you need to do to afford this boat, garage sale. This is just a suite of little sailboat that I've seen in a long time. And because she was born around 1960, Okay. All right. And uh, originally built in Germany of wood, and then later on, a man named Cluett uh, in Greenwich, Connecticut area, decided to build a few hulls there, maybe three or four, maybe not very many, but uh, uh, just an early start. And that was back in the early 60s, early transitioning into fiberglass. To find this boat in this special spot, you know where we are? Uh, Marblehead, Massachusetts. Yeah, that's good. You got marbles in your head. Listen, this is this is Little Harbor. Have we heard of Little Harbor? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the original Harbor yacht yard that uh, Ted Hood bought, and where he started his sail loft in full production. What do you say we take a look at this boat? I just want to take a quick second to say welcome and thank you to our newest sponsor. It's our friends at Ritual. Ritual is a maker of high quality, highly transparent multivitamins and supplements, um, such as their new product, which is called Symbiotic Plus. They reached out to us a few months ago and sent me a sample package to try out. And so I've been using their multivitamins, their regular uh, multivitamins. Which I also have been enjoying their protein powder, which is also really great. One nice thing about Ritual as a company is they believe in total transparency. So they list every single ingredient, they list every single supplier of that ingredient, and then they also link the studies that are associated with those ingredients. So they're kind of telling you where it's from and why they're making the decisions to put it in there. And I really like that about the company. I think. I've been trying to get Captain Q to come over to the, the healthy side of the equation. He is still in his canned meat world. So Ritual's really, really excited about this new product, which is called Symbiotic Plus, which actually is the first of its kind to have a three-in-one biotic so that means they have a prebiotic, a probiotic, and then a postbiotic. And so the prebiotic is supporting growth and activity of the bacteria that's living in the gut. Okay. The probiotic is actually the living microorganisms that are designed to relieve gas, bloating, and occasional diarrhea, which is super important on a boat. <laughs> and then there's a postbiotic, which provides fuel for the cells that make up the lining of the gut. So, um, you're really getting all of that in this one capsule. It's this single nested capsule like this. It smells like a, a spearmint to me, which makes it a lot easier to go down. Symbiotic Plus is the delayed release technology that releases each biotic in the right spot. So whether that's colon or intestine, etc., they've got that science figured out. It's not required to be refrigerated, which is really great on a boat. It's a clean formula. It's totally traceable. It's also vegan friendly. They are offering fans of our show 20 percent off the first monthly subscription fee and you you do that by going to ritual.com slash 20 c-a-p-t-q just want to say thanks again to our friends at ritual for sponsoring us and helping us bring the show to you uh support from folks like our friends at ritual uh means a lot to us and if you want to support the show and you want to have a multivitamin uh go ahead and use the link and save a few bucks and, and give it a shot thanks very much uh, and back to the show A 32 foot uh, called a uh, International 500 and it was designed by Robert Henry. I'm just trying to read this, it's a little tricky. If I just sneeze, I'm gonna blow off, <laughs> off this bulkhead right now. But uh, this is the, the Tinevere, she is so pretty. And look at this, look at this, look at this transom. 
Look at the little, little dimple down here and the little line running right down. It's so delicate. It's just so delicate. Uh, I absolutely love it. She's uh, 32 feet long and weighs all of 5,000 pounds. I don't know what the ballast is. It's probably like, I don't know, 1,500 or 2,000 pounds or something. I think they did add some extra and, and we'll see some uh, additional lead pigs that are down in the bilge at one spot um, to trim her out. The present owners have sailed her religiously for a number of years. She just came out of the water this year. Uh, they feel a little um, disconsolate about selling her because they love the boat, but they did buy a bigger boat that fit their family and expanding family. And uh, they're also a little embarrassed because they always has, have maintained the bright work and the overall, you know, finish of the boat. But she's, what we, what's the math, 57 years old? Yep, or That's 62. That's older than you, Randy. 62, actually. Oh, gosh, 62 years old. That's really older than you. It's almost older than me. Mm. So, Randy. We always like to start at the pointy end, right? How pretty a bow is this? This is a classic spoon bow going right down. It's all cut away. And again, we say cut away because uh, earlier uh, boats and schooners would start their keel somewhere up in here and there'd be a long run. But, uh, oh, in the 30s and 40s, yacht designers started to get rid of all that extra wetted surface. And they realized the boat could still track perfectly well and uh, turn and maneuver very well with just uh, a lot less keel down there. We're seeing followed fiberglass as far as I know uh, because that's the way they build them back then. And I imagine we'd find the thickness on this thing is pretty heavy duty. Uh, it, <laughs> there's just the sound of this thing. It's, it's really rock solid. Um, she has internal ballast and her keel starting down here. And there's a, I don't know what that is right there. I think, uh, I think they might have nudged a little rock maybe. A little kiss? Yeah. A little sweetheart, a little love tap. Uh, she has a nice molded in cove stripe right there. And look at the teak rail on top of that. Beautiful. And with a rail, with a, with, a, with a cap on top of it too. It's quite handsome. Would you do anything with the gel coat here? Cause we got some little bit of crazing. It Randy, look... Randy, yeah. you always ask me these questions about what I would do with these boats. Yeah. What's my answer? Go sailing first. Go sailing first, especially with this boat, because I know she was sailing all last summer and uh, in the last bunch of summers, she was starting to lose her varnish and so forth. This is nice too for the, uh, for the boat yard. You can always find where to put the water line. It's actually molded right into the hull. Oh, that little seam, okay. But when you look at the paint on here, this has just been slapdashed every year. Just a good old day sailing boat. This bottom is actually pretty fair, uh, given the amount of paint and so forth that's on it. And, uh, but again, wouldn't it be nice to blast it, soda blast it, and clean it right up? Oh, she, she would, this boat would just sparkle. One thing I've noticed about this boat, I have to walk around this ladder because it's the Irish in me that won't let me walk under the ladder. Randy? I'm going under. Don't go under, Randy. <laughs> don't go under. I don't, Trust me. I don't believe in just, that. <laughs> This may be the last episode you see Randy in. I'm gonna to have to do selfies from now on. Anyway, uh, nice full bilge down here. Not a lot of through holes because there's not a lot of stuff inside. Uh, right here, I know there is an exhaust for the head and that's that and there's a pickup someplace. That may actually be the pickup for the head, which is unusual. We don't normally see a screen on that, do we? No. Anybody home? Yeah, well, you know, this is, here you've got hollow bilge. And then we get down to the, this is the glass that's filled with lead. I'm pretty certain this is, uh, this is not screwed on. So that's really nice for you. Uh, Why do I care about that? Well, you just don't wanna to have to worry about um, a lot of these uh, bolt on keels uh, will, will eventually separate if you hit something or the bonding in between the keel and the bottom of the hull, let's go. Uh, oh, so you end up with one of those like uh, keel smiles? The smile thing, yeah. 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 Did you just back up through the ladder? Yep. That's good, I think you've just unwound what you did before. We have another uh, drain here. Prob this is probably a, a, a scupper drain maybe, yep. or this could be a scupper drain. Two bladed simple prop on here. This thing's been replaced every year probably, and it's time to go now again. Uh, you want to get all these, see the little barnacles on here? She may have been sitting on the, on the uh, mooring a lot last summer too, 
and these barnacles get on there and they leave those little bits. That all slows up the efficiency of the prop. This is definitely engine intake and I'm not certain what that one would be. Maybe another scupper? Well, I've got one up here too, so yeah. uh, it, it, it could be, but we don't know. There's no center board, so she draws... Four foot nine. Four foot nine. You know where I want to go now, Randy? You want to go top size. I want to go top size, buddy. All right. Follow me up. We love the subscribers. Yeah, more subscribers means that we're going to get recommended to more people, and so that helps spread the love and spread the word about old classic boats and what we're doing, so every little bit helps. Thanks again. Randy, come on aboard, buddy. Oh, thanks. All right. Now, I have a sweet little 32-foot day sailor that'll take me overnight up the whole coast of Maine. I'm told that they, since they were just sailing this boat, uh, this past season or so, and the engine is touted to be running very well, that I, we could slide this right over the side and I could be making my way northward, northeast, uh, in short order, couldn't I? Oh yeah. Ooh, it's so tempting. We have a nice little cockpit here. The combings are, are appropriate size. They're not big and deep, but you're gonna stay in here. You got a place to brace your feet. And this is called a tiller. And as I say, we haven't seen too many of these. All we usually see are emergency tillers, right? The Traveler here for the mainsail couldn't be simpler. And it's got a couple of little stops that you can adjust and center, center this piece. I can't quite reach that one, but right now. So we do have a new bilge pump there, huh? Yeah, fresh. Uh, that's a good thing. It's right for the captain to build some biceps. <laughs> Nicely. And we have a, uh, a, a throttle control. This is a Moore style where you, you, um, you can pull your button in and then just uh, rev up the engine down here with that red button or you can leave it out and then put it forward in gear and the further for forward you push that, faster the boat goes or pull it back to go in reverse. This little pull button here historically is a kill switch for the engine. I don't know if that's the particular one. There is a panel for this little universal um, diesel right there in front of you. The plastic is, is crazed. We have a little uh, garage back here for you and a uh, nice sail back but that's that's pretty good. Look at the solid, all the solid glass and mat and roving back in there. And there's a wind vent on the transom. No derade style, just a wind vent. We've got two pleasant little cockpit lockers here, sail lockers. So let me take a peek to see if I can resolve our question on the, the through holes here. Oh. That's a scupper through hole. Ah, Look at that. So it's a deck scupper. It's okay. a deck scupper right there. And on the other side, we've got the same sort of deal. And you can see the hose running down out there. Little storage spot here for our winch handles. These are the old Merriman style. Look at that's a heavy bronze piece right there. Has a little click in button. And that goes right inside here and will lock in. Just gonna depress that guy a little bit. There we go. And that's right in there. Now that's just one speed. It's not really powerful, but it's enough to pull it in here. Randa, you like to get me up the pointy end here. I'm sorry, I have no bow spit for you on this boat. But we do have a nice, uh, relatively new Furlex. This is not from 60 years ago. Uh, roller furler, and it does have the double groove in it in case you do want to hoist another jib. Uh, we do not have a, a, a place to, for a roller for an anchor. You know why? I believe. We're just going to hang out and sail? Well, that, but you are going to stop for lunch and you're going to pick up a little 15 or 20 pound CQR and throw it over the side. The tow rail is beautiful. We were trying to sort out whether or not this is one or two pieces, but I guess it's two pieces probably. We're standing on non-skid that was probably molded in originally and it's been painted over. And they weren't very sophisticated about doing some of that stuff back then, so uh, it all works. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, stay with me. <laughs> I like these little port lights and the little, the little uh, peaked nose on her. Uh, Little opening top, we'll take a look below there, but that's a fork, forward cabin. And we always like to find little places like that. Now we don't understand uh, the why, situation. Why do we like places like that? Oh, because we can put things like this in there. And then we just looked at our, our, uh, our uh, uh, Merriman, Merriman winches. That little handle goes right in and you push the trigger. 
so she goes down, locks in place, and that won't come out. This is all very solid, basic, original, um, anodized aluminum from 60 years ago and still worthwhile. And the winches still click. There's some sort of situation that's gone on here. I don't believe this was original design, this patch of material, because there's a... a um, reinforcement plate. A reinforcement mating piece inside under the cabin okay. of steel I know and I can't we can't quite figure out that this is aluminum or fiber what it is anyway it's a mast is the mast is stepped on deck the box isn't doing any real work I don't think but something underneath it well it's, it's been covering th up it, those I beams yeah it's got the well the the uh, bolts those are threaded rods actually yeah. going through here but this is an I beam right here or a C channel uh, oh, that's okay. A, that's okay. a C channel, and then there's more there. What's that hole right there? Oh. What's that little cap on there? Well, normally it would be a little bit more polished. Well, yes, that would make it more <laughs> noble, right? One uh, thing I like here is the track for the gooseneck. Okay. Because the boom is pretty low in the cockpit. Well, that's that's true, but this was also part of something we talked about uh, recently, I think, a little bit. Uh, when they cut the sails, they would cut the sail uh, full length because they're well here's your band oh my gosh great this is happy so this this boom would be up living right about here and the sail would come out that down that low it couldn't go any lower because then it would be out of certification for racing so the sail maker cut the sail just so it went right down there completely but that didn't give them much to fiddle around with the sail did it how could they flatten that mainsail out mr cunningham Yep. Pull that down. You have a little bag of sail in here. The draft moves forward and you can sail upwind and the wind pipes up. One other thing we're seeing here too, Randy, uh, from the old days. This is a roller furling unit. Now, see that knob there? Yep. And that'll take a handle, a winch handle will go in there uh, of sorts and you can turn that. And it's geared. You can't see the gearing uh, very well because it's all inside here. But there's a gear that will allow this whole boom to rotate. And as it rotates, the sail comes down and rolls up on it like the, uh, like an upside down curtain shade in your room, you know. I'm going to walk aft here, Randy, and I think if you would, you should join me below decks. Oh, thanks, yeah. Okay. Let's do it. I like this boat. Hey, Randy. Hey. Once again, I invite you below on this fabulous little mini yacht. Okay, we don't have a fold-down table. We don't have high-gloss varnish. Um, we don't have a, a three burner stove and oven, I can tell you that from right where I'm sitting. But we do have a fireplace. And this little guy, I had one of these on my very first boat, and uh, it'll cook us right out. It'll dry this boat right up on a, on a misty, he, uh, foggy day. We have, uh, oh gosh, where do we start? Two berths here. There's two more forward we'll take a look at, and there is a third upper pilot arrangement here. That berth will actually fly open a little bit, just give you a rough idea here. Uh, it takes a little extra uh, maneuvering, but that'll come up here like so. It locks in at each end right here, yeah. and there'll be a lock on that, on that end too. So it just goes right out. But when this is up, that gives you a pretty wide um, settee berth, doesn't it? Yeah. My hat's hitting that overhead. I know, Randy. Well, it's sagging a little bit. And it, it is sagging. It's down here a little bit. There's, this boat just needs TLC every place, but uh, it's, not, it's not debilitating TLC. Yeah. Not for this guy. So, um, you know, there's only so much we can do walking around in here. How about on this side, just but the one bunk? This side is just one bunk. There's a board that'll come up, and they've probably got a place to store this board. Uh, you know, Concordia had all sorts of things like this, but if I take this board up and out, you see. Oh yeah. Now look at the size of that berth. Now aside from some woodwork in my way, and I know you don't have a pillow for me, but oh, this is this is the way you got comfortable at sea in the old days. You'd have some toasty feet if that fire was gone. Oh yeah, exactly. Just I don't know. It's just an old boat that's still salvageable, highly salvageable, and, uh, and ready to go right off of the side, I think, right now. I'd be down here for about a week or two ahead of time with soap and water going crazy, just getting it tidied up, sweetened up, too. Okay. So Enough relaxing. Me... What's... Let's keep... <laughs> okay. 
You get me down like that, Randy. It's hard to get me up again. It gets dangerous. Oh, we'll step over to the galley if you would. <laughs> <laughs> Don't step too far. That's close enough. Hold it. You notice we just have one little hand pump here. And it's going to just bring you a little bit of water in case you need a little bit of water. Is that seawater? Uh, no, that's going to be fresh water. So there's a tank There's somewhere? a tank on here somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Haven't found all that minutia, but uh, this is all mahogany here too, isn't it? There's a grain in here. Isn't that a mahogany grain? I think so. Uh, now, here's a nice little icebox arrangement here. It's catching, but can you see in there? Oh, I see some good stuff. Oh, huh? yeah. Yeah, these are real sailors, this boat. And also, there's a special little door in there, too. Uh, let's see what that is. Oh, look, a special Denny Moore door. Huh. Who's, there's a two burner alcohol stove. Bingo with a cutting board on top. And that needs to be freshened up. Um, and uh, plate storage and glass storage underneath here. And there's a whole host of little lockers like this. Look at, can you see this under? Would you look at under here? <laughs> uh, see how that's all done? Little hinges and so forth. Here's your circuit panel. We have all of four circuit breakers and uh, a couple of uh, cigarette lighter plugs. Randy, you'll be glad to know that even in this day and age when they built these boats, they didn't forget your ubiquitous pot and pan storage or whatever you want to put in their storage. And right beside it, everything on here is really cute. Here's a little hanging locker. Oh yeah, for your follies. Two follies in there, right? Yeah. You want to see the engine? I do, yeah. I'm right next to it. It's a surprise, isn't it? Okay. You set that there for me. And a good guy. Now, we need just a little help here. There we go. Oh. There's a little universal diesel. And, you know, it looks sort of cramped and slightly uh, dirtish in there. But, you know, one thing I noticed, when you find that your belts are nice and tight like this, you know that the owners have been taking care of this whole rig. Uh, this top piece, by the way, is split, and that can be lifted up and pulled out somewhere. I'm not going to do it. Even with the sink attached, uh, you could get a little more room inside there. So that's going to be very accessible. There we go. A nice deep sump. Wow. So look at that. That's what you get with a full keel boat. And there's some rainwater left in there probably from before the season. The, uh, uh, raw water pump cap is not off and usually when they put boats away they'll take that off and pull out the impeller right right but here you like this look at this strainer the sea strainer up high yep, right you there. can really eyeball that right away and this filter that's one of your your primary fuel filter right there right that's yeah that's real old school a little sketchy you might invest in a new raycor this boat could live on a mooring and you're going to sail off and on that mooring. That's all you're going to do. You don't need the engine. This is another one of those forward ship heads that makes so much sense on smaller boats. I don't, I'm going to have to back into the forward cabin a little bit so you can get your camera in around here. Watch your head on those uh, bolts. Okay. Uh, oop. I'm going to squeeze in sideways there. Uh, very nice little uh, bureau for the, for the sink, a little hand pump. And we've got mirrors but they're not tilted. They didn't know about tilting mirrors back in these days. And that head, I would say, is very functional. I don't know about the holding tank on board. Quite possibly there isn't one, and you would just not use it till you get back to shore, and then go ashore and do your thing. There's a chain plate for your upper chain plate right there. It looks okay, I think, doesn't it? Yeah. I look up above you, and you'll see that uh, the backing plate for that mast step. That big massive piece of, of metal up there, I think, is keeping the, the mast right where you want it. Now, I happen to have just moved into the forward cabin, and uh, we've got a couple of V-bursts here. There's a hanging locker you'll see when you get around on each side, and we've got storage lockers up above each berth. And uh, I don't know about it, but we have a, a very large store of water bottles and some uh, dock lines and, and sheets and so forth. I'm gonna move those out of my way. I also see an awning. And that's a cockpit awning. That's a good old-fashioned cockpit awning. You string it over the boom, you hoist it up on a halyard, and you look like, you know, yeah, you're, you're a Greek yacht owner or something. But <laughs> I'm going to get in here and get cozy. Ooh. Oh, I'm back in the 60s, Randy, and I'm happy as a clam. 
you know, I don't have a lot of opening ports, but when I open that hatch right above you. Uh, I'm going to get a ton of air in here. And I got two little lights here for additional light. And right over my head, I have a light fixture to read with. This is a wonderful little boat. It's being offered at a very generous discount from what you would ever possibly buy a 32 foot boat today. Uh, pal, thanks for coming along. All right. Enjoying the ride. Uh, Sorry about no pillow. Well, maybe next time. Yeah, right. How many times have we heard that? 110? Good night. Uh, good night, Randy. Good, goodbye from the 60s. Oh, hey, Randy. Hey. It's wrap up time. <laughs> and Captain Q. Oh, I'm feeling a little bit of love today. Uh, feeling a little bit of love. Maybe a little bit more than a little bit of love. Uh, we had a chance to look at an International 500 fiberglass version, of which there were very few. It has got the sweetest lines, and that's all you can say about it. It's just, uh, it's just a perfect shear. Designed by Robert Henry, the man who designed the mainmast, the only mast, for Ranger, the J boat from the 1930s. Uh, so it has good bones and heritage to it. She is tired. Uh, she, how, how old do we say she is? 62? Yep. 62 years old. And so she needs some varnish. If I held a really good garage sale, I could probably own and slide it right off the, uh, the, the wharf and sail it to Maine um, and then spend some time fixing it up. So she was really cool. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I'm giving it a 10 because I know she floats. The owners told me she floats because they sailed her. And, and then I'm going to give you, <sighs> this is a hard one because I really want to give it a lot. But the truth of the matter is, there's not that much boat there. But uh, I would give, uh, God, I'm, I'm, I'm a problem, Randy. What do you think? You've got inflation. I have an inflation problem. Because, I'm here to correct your inflation. Okay. What if I gave it another 20 points right off the bat? Okay. Uh, so we're at 30. Yeah. Okay. So 30 points. Uh, and I got to. I gotta give it five more, just because it's just a perfect older boat. And the neat thing about it is, as classic as she is, she's made out of fiberglass. And we checked the hull, and that hull looks pretty tight and strong. I think it's great for people that are looking for the lottery ticket winner to buy a boat. This one, you don't need a lottery you ticket. You don't need a lottery ticket. You just need to do your garage cleanup. I'm going another five. I'm going to 40 for it, because I really love the boat. I think you've got to discount a little bit for the condition and the work that it's going to need. No, I'm not going to. All I'm right. not going All to. Right. There you go. 40, 40 for a 1960 Robert Henry designed International 500, uh, a real sweetheart of a beautiful day sailor, uh, picnic boat, camp out boat. I love it. If you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when the next one comes out, please hit the alert bell. And that's not desperate at all. Randy, how would I ever find out what's coming up next? Uh, you can follow us on Instagram here yeah. or Facebook here. We'll have little previews of what's coming up on our next episodes a little bit early. That's pretty cool, previews. You all join me. I'm going to Instagram right now, and I'm going to find out what's coming up next week. Thank you very much. You know, Instagram's not a place. <laughs> <laughs>